friends welcome to my workplace at ranaghat west bengal india this is a white cataract with dark tinge so the nucleus is going to be quite hard there is a bit of corneal opacity just below the center we have started the surgery the main incision has been made on the posterior aspect of the limbus and now this is a side port about 3 o'clock hours away from the main incision on the left side. Since this is a white cataract, the anterior capsule is stained with tripan blue dye underneath this air bubble. If we apply an air bubble, the staining is very quick. We must apply the dye on all parts of the anterior capsule so that uniform staining occurs. You can see a white area that is because of the corneal opacity. And now the dye is washed out. I use a 23 gauze Simco cannula to wash the dye out of the anterior chamber. We can use bimanual irrigation aspiration also. And now the anterior chamber is filled up with 2% hydroxypropyl methyl cellulose. Now I go to higher magnification and do the capsulorexis. The microscope is OMS 90 from Topcon and the machine being used is Oatly Catarix 3. The capsulorexis is being done with the help of a uterator forceps. Size of this rexis is about 5.5 millimeter or 5.75 millimeter. I did a large rexis because I knew that the nucleus is going to be very hard. We will see that in a short time. Visco is again injected and now is the time to introduce the tip of the FECO needle. The exposed part of the FECO needle is little more than in soft cataracts. Some superficial cortical lens matter is removed. Now we can see how hard the nucleus is. I try my technique, this submarine chop. The tip is buried into the substance of the nucleus. It goes through the nucleus towards the opposite equator. And as it reaches near the opposite equator, the chopper is used to crack the nucleus. I could crack it. but it is not a good crack. So I go again, do some more scalp to go to a deeper level and then I try to some more scalps. So this is, I'm going to make a trench the submarine chop failed in this case and after making the trench I have got a very good crack. Now I rotate the nucleus 180 degree and I try to separate the nucleus but it did not happen. So there is a stubborn leathery plate on the posterior aspect of the nucleus. So inject some visco, take two hooks, go to the floor of the trench and then apply opposite forceps and yes, the nucleus has divided into two heminuclei. Some more visco and now I go again with the feco needle. I go into the substance of on heminucleus, go towards the periphery, one more sculpt, go little deeper and now I try to divide the nucleus. Yes, 
have got a good crack. I come to the other side and go into the substance of the seminucleus and try to crack this. In this case, the two heminuclei has not been completely divided into two pieces. There are some attachments between the pieces. Inject visco and again, again go with the two hooks and try to separate the pieces. Yes, these two pieces are now free. I come to the other side and now try to separate these two pieces. Yes, this two piece also free. So, we have got four pieces and now I tilt the apex, tilt the on big piece so that the apex of the piece projects towards the corneal endothelium. And now I go with the FECO hand piece and hold the apex and start emulsifying. Ultrasonic energy used in this case is 80 percent, flow rate is 45 ml per minute, vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury. And now the one quadrant has been emulsified. There was LIDRS lens iris diaphragm retropulsion syndrome. I lifted off the iris and the depth of the anterior chamber decreased, became normal. And now I am emulsifying this piece. The larger pieces are subdivided into smaller pieces by the chopper. And now come to the other piece. The small corneal opacity is not causing much of a problem. So we start eating off the large piece, hold it at some point of time and use the chopper to divide the large piece into smaller pieces. Now, as I come to the last piece, I want to support the posterior capsule and the cornea with visco, some visco in front and some visco behind. And this will take care of the corneal endothelium as well as the posterior capsule. Moreover, I am going to decrease the vacuum and flow rate further. So, I hold at the apex, go into the substance and try to divide this piece with the chopper. At this time, the vacuum is 350 and flow rate is 35. Initially, it was 45 and 450. This is the last portion of the nucleus and it is safely emulsified. So, the cataract that appeared quite difficult is not so. We have done it in just 9 minutes. This is a totally unedited recording. And now I am using the 23 gauze Simco to find out if there is any cortex anywhere. Yes, I have got some cortex at 2 o'clock. Now I go through the side port and remove some more cortex from 10 o'clock and 11 o'clock. We can use bimanual irrigation aspiration cannuli to remove these cortex. 
And now, an intraocular lens is to be implanted. I am using Visco to fill up the capsular bag and the anterior chamber before implanting the intraocular lens. And now, the intraocular lens goes in. This is a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens. The lens is dialed so that the haptics occupy the equators of the capsular bag. Now, whenever we use visco to implant the intraocular lens, we must remove the visco completely. I use a Simco first to remove most of the visco. I irrigate thoroughly the anterior chamber and the capsular bag by the Simco. I take about 5 ml of PSS and irrigate it through the aspirating port as well as there is continuous irrigation from the side. Some more cortex was there at 3 o'clock, it has been removed. And now I take the bimanual irrigation aspiration cannoli. I go behind the intraocular lens, irrigate the capsular bag thoroughly so that no visco molecules stay there. If we clean the visco molecules like this, there will never be post off rise of intraocular pressure. There will never be a stevy cornea and the patient will be very comfortable throughout the night and the next day and the patient will bless us. So, though it is boring to watch this part of the surgery, cleaning of visco, this is very important and I have kept this part of the surgery also unedited. Yes, instead of Simco, we can use a bimanual irrigation aspiration device, but I think all instruments are useful. And now, this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber and see how to form the anterior chamber. Hold the Simco like this in a slant way at the wound like this. Give a forward push and come out and the anterior chamber will be very nicely formed. Check the integrity of all the wounds and conclude the case. Thank you very much for your attention. Hope this video will help you in developing your surgical skills. Be a great surgeon and serve your patients with love, respect, empathy and great surgical competence.